it has arrived. Hello everybody and welcome to uh, the unboxing video of the year. Uh, this is of course for the Hogs of War miniatures game and it's something that I've been wanting to do for a very long time. This is finally the time where the miniatures games are being delivered to the backers of the Kickstarter and initially all I received was <laughs> the main game mat and some dice. Uh, so that's what turned up first, which wasn't the best sort of first impression, but I did uh, read up on the project update and I did know that these were coming uh, separately, so seeing them first uh, wasn't that big of a surprise, but I was hoping to get the main box first. But because I bought the uh, largest uh, bundle of everything that the miniatures game has to offer, uh, that's why it took the longest, because I also ordered a t-shirt as well, I'm hoping it's going to be in the box. But without any further ado, we'll put the dice over there and let's open the magic box. Okay, big box on display. Let us open. And oh my goodness, the, <laughs> um, the main box itself is going to be quite something to get out. So if you just, you just give me a moment. Oh, we have the deluxe edition box. We have the... Team Lard expansion, which we'll get a closer look at it in a minute. Finally, <laughs> this is incredibly heavy. We have the actual base miniatures game. So we'll start with the main base game. As you can see, it's a massive box. We've got the golden artwork on the front, very nice logo. If we look on the back, we can see the entirety of what is offered within the box. 96 miniatures, 270 cards, a rule book, campaign book, one player token, four plain screens, custom dice, terrain pieces, base tiles, building tiles, mega buildings, deployables, refine, uh, refineries, uh, solo spawns, tokens, flight indicator, damage cubes, and one pigeon. I think the pigeon is the, uh, the most important part, really. <laughs> He's going to be the game changer. But let's take a look inside the magical box. I have to say, weight-wise, it is very heavy, but I guess it's expected considering the contents of the box. Oh my goodness! Let's get a better view of this. Oh, look at that! Oh, <laughs> look at the artwork on the on the inside of the box. I mean, the usage of the flags as well is very nice. Uh, you can see we've got Piggy Striker, of course. We've got <laughs> Uncle Ham's Hogs. We've got the sauerkrauts with their own cute little flag as well, which I did see before. And of course, Tommy's trotters. So to unpack what's inside, we've got the campaign book. Uh, we've got the rule book, which I'm hoping has been amended in a couple of areas. Uh, we also have the regular folded board. So I have both the mat and the board, which is pretty handy. Player screens, uh, which are smaller than I thought they'd be. So four player screens there. And then we have, oh, that's already come out. <laughs> and then we have all of the uh, individual base tiles uh, and the main base area there. I've already <laughs> cut out that bit, apparently. It came out quite easily. In terms of the material, it's pretty sturdy. Like I can't, I can't easily bend this, so little air base there. Yeah, so the, the more I'm filling with them, the easier they are actually coming out. Uh, so considering that there are quite a few of them, like you get everything for every single team, so every single base, you can see that you have the individual flags here and those change depending on the team, obviously. Each team has their own flag tokens. Obviously all the bases and stuff are still the same. And then here we have the uh, additional tokens for uh, mines, pillboxes, artillery, explosive barrels, the pigeon of course, the wonderful token, uh, all of the landscape, uh, terrain, uh, hexes as well, and these are double-sided too, so you can see you've got water terrain on one side, you've got mountain terrain on the other, there's explosive terrain over here, and uh, other tokens, well the back of the tokens I should say that we've already shown. 
In fact, if we just quickly take a look at the campaign book, I'm curious to see actually, because you can see it says it contains uh, missions Hamburg Hill, Fortified Swine, I Spy, Well, 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 Catch the Pigeon, Hog Fighters, Major Blimp, Saving Private Ryan, and uh, Paths of Gravy. <laughs> Interesting ones. But just to observe, let's see, you've got Hamburger Hill. So it's nice that they've taken elements from the game that you can recognize. Uh, obviously, the, the board won't uh, be the same as in-game, but I, I do really appreciate those kind of elements being brought in uh, alongside their own individual ideas. <laughs> but you can see the campaign book is pretty detailed uh, in telling you what the primary objective is, what how the scoring is done, uh, additional setup that's needed as well. So everything uh, is, is there for some easy understanding, easy reading as well. There's not a, like a huge amount of text to go through and it's nice as well that they've incorporated their uh, artwork as well uh, onto the campaign book which I didn't initially realize um, so nice nice little details so then we have the main stuff in the middle which I'm trying not to uh, <laughs> to have fall out straight away uh, but you can see here we've got all the dice all the cards um, all the sort of holders for like your um, plane uh, barrier type thing and then if I bring that down we have all of the miniatures for each team as well so we're gonna focus on the miniatures actually because I mean the cars are just we'll, we'll open them all separately and they open up quite nicely so like I said all the holders are here uh, all of the sort of physical tokens uh, and markers and all the dice And then all the individual cards as well that are sealed up nicely. Like I said, I won't, I won't uh, unpack them because they're, they're nicely packaged up at the moment. I don't want to get all messy with the cards, but you've got all the uh, vehicle upgrades, all the uh, plane upgrades, all of the ob uh, mission objective cards, uh, and this, oopsie daisy, some unit upgrades as well. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> sad times. Kind of knocked them a little bit, but if we just take out all the individual miniatures here, minus the massive <laughs> falling of all the miniatures there, I've actually got the um, the old model here that was sent, the prototype that was sent out to me uh, by Stone Sword Games, uh, which we can compare in a second. But if we just take a look at some of the the actual miniatures here. So yeah, taking a look at the actual physical miniatures, you can see that there is plenty of detail. They've come out really nicely. Um, they are smaller than I expected, but I guess I've been playing the TTS version a bit too much. Uh, so I, I can't really <laughs> keep them in shot that well. Um, but yeah, I mean, everyone was saying during the Kickstarter it would have been great if uh, the likes of uh, Piggy Striker and the Uncle Hamshogs could have further designs to them, so they could be more... Um, similar to their in-game models because as you can see the uh, there's only really two types of designs in that you have the, the Tommy style with the little Tommy's hat or you have the German style with the little pickle help which is fine because either way they are colored and you can paint them if you wish but overall the quality is great um, and the packaging is good too uh, because you have all these little slots just to house all of your miniatures uh, so things can't get too messy, uh, unless, of course, they happen to all fall out, which is going to be fun to put them all back again. So that's that for the actual physical physical hogs themselves. Seeing as they've all kind of fallen out anyway, <laughs> we can see uh, the, the mess of components here. But yeah, the, let, let's, take, let's take this tank and just try and compare the two. There doesn't seem to be massive differences, if I'm honest, uh, compared to the prototype. If you look at the... This, 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 there's slightly more detail on the final version, obviously. It's a lot more defined as well. Uh, the gun turrets are actually a tad bit smaller uh, in comparison, sort of the, the side gun turrets. We take a look at all the others. The, there's a blimp. Little piggy blimp, which of course... It has a hole on the underside to uh, stick the pole into so that when it's actually on the board uh, it can just sort of hover above and it's the same with the uh, planes as well 
which as we can see here in just a second, uh, it's pretty cool that the Germans have their own little plane here, which has some side details that it will cross on the on the tail wings. Actually, no, scratch that. It's the same across all. <laughs> Everybody has one, I think. Um, I've forgotten all the different types because I know that there 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 is these two different types of planes. Uh, they're not exactly the same. Uh, I believe this one was the the Fokker because it has the uh, three wings, and this one just has the standard two. We also have the two types of tanks as well. Uh, so the uh, German style tank, the aqua tank, which is available across all teams. All teams have equal amounts of vehicles, and this is just an absolute mess at this point. <laughs> but you can see again just the the detail of the armored car, which is uh, kind of like a monopoly piece. Actually, this is exactly what it uh, reminds me of. But yeah, that is the the base game. Uh, that is everything for it. Uh, I'd love to take everything out and show it, but I feel like I have a lack of space <laughs> with the current setup that I have. But we can now open the team lard and the expansion stuff uh, and see the bits that we were missing. Right after I put all these back individually, one by one, slowly but surely. <laughs> okay, so back to the team lard expansion and the deluxe edition. Uh, nice little details actually on the front here. Uh, you can see the little Team Lard hat there uh, with the Born to Grill helmet, which is nice. I'll just unpack that in a second and we'll just, yeah, once I've unpacked it, you can probably look at the artwork on the back. Let's take a look at the Deluxe Edition, which should be the additional models. And I can feel that this is another little panel. Oh, and there's the coin as well. That's kind of what I was hoping for, one of the little details. So as you can see, we have uh, the trenches that you can apply to whatever uh, token you're on. Actually, I'll, I'll leave that for last, actually, because there's... Is there more than one, or is it just the one? It is just the one, okay. <laughs> so we've got trenches, we've got AA guns, uh, we have got further artilleries, and we've got pillboxes as well. Uh, alongside that, there's also uh, barricades. I think that's what they're called. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, and mines as well. So just further details. Obviously, I have these all as tokens. Uh, but uh, if you get the uh, deluxe edition, you can have these as the 3D prints as well. So it kind of brings everything else to life uh, rather than everything being tokens. Uh, so on to the main man of the hour. It is the pigeon. <laughs> He's huge, um, but he does revolve around uh, a specific game mode. Uh, so yeah, pigeon game mode confirmed. Somewhere in the rulebook or um, rule setup, there's a specific mode for the pigeon. Um, but I also got, of course, the <laughs> the Rick Mail uh, Lord Flashhog model as well, which is again much more than I expected, but it's a nice little nod. To Rick Mail. I'm not really sure my camera can focus on it that well. Uh, but yeah, having him in your uh, team, I think, gives you some kind of buff or some kind of advantage. He can do something that we'll figure out as we go through because I will be playing the miniatures game going forward at some point. It is something that does take a lot of time, um, but I also need to take a look at this token. It's not honestly. It's not the cleanest token. Looking at it, there there is just some there is some marking on it, um, but at the end of the day, like it it does the job. It has oh, it's so shiny. It has the medal on one side, uh, and then on the other side, it has two little sausages. is is very nice. So yeah, that is the deluxe edition. If you are wanting some uh, a, a better visual. Uh, representation of the additional elements of the game. I, I'd certainly recommend getting that. So here we can get uh, a better look at the, well, kind of a better look, you can see most of the artwork on the back uh, because my, again my camera's not amazing. Um, but yeah they've really outdone themselves uh, with the visuals of the artwork and as you can see it also says 24 miniatures, 54 cards, one solo campaign book because this is its own game mode. Uh, four crate battlefield hexes, 28 tokens including hog tags, and one base hex tile. 
So, oh no, <laughs> he's down. Open up the majestic box. It's very clean. He also gives you uh, like a game time uh, estimate between an hour and 90 minutes, which is fairly long, all things considered. But we have the campaign book and a nice little helmet here. Uh, so it contains the missions P-Day, <laughs> Hambush, Market Gammon, These Little Piggies and the Hamden Boar. So all missions that are not related to the original game, so they are completely their own. Again, just really nice presentation uh, with the campaign book. Uh, all the information's there, step-by-step -step guide on the setup. Um, but I'm really curious to read through this because ever since I saw uh, Stone Sword Games working on a solo mode, uh, I really wanted to know how it would function in, you know, you controlling the AI's turns and stuff like that because, you know, you have to move them yourself. Um, and I wanted to do that on the tabletop simulator as well, but they hadn't updated it. Hopefully they have, I haven't checked recently, but fingers crossed so we can have both the physical and digital uh, videos in future. But yeah, really nice, really detailed missions. Um, we'll be going through these in further detail in future videos, like I said, but onto the actual physical stuff. And we have all the tokens here uh, for the hog tags, the flags, uh, the crates that were mentioned. Uh, not entirely sure what the hog tags do. Haven't really looked into that. <laughs> Another cool thing, look, you got the face on the front, tail on the back. Just little details like that I really like. And then the actual uh, models themselves. Again, uh, no real difference from the base game other than color, but if anyone sees purple in Hogs of War, they know exactly what to expect. And yeah, once again, we're not going to take all of them out, but just so you can see the beautiful purple tank, the beautiful purple pig models. And again, even though this is its own solo mode, you know, there's nothing stopping you from incorporating it into the base game. So if you wanted to, you know, you could play as Team Lard in the base game. It doesn't just have to be uh, you versus the AI. You can mix and match as much as you want because at the end of the day, uh, with a lot of things uh, within any kind of board game, uh, yes, you've got the main rule set that you can follow, but at the end of the day, it's your miniatures game, so you can make up your own rules if you want to. Of course, if we make videos in future, then uh, I will obviously stick to the main rules, but yeah, got the cards here as well. Again, not gonna open them all uh, because I have shown them, most of them before anyway. But all in all, that is it for the Hogs of War miniatures game unboxing. It has been more content than I can handle, if I'm honest, because there's just so much to it. And it is certainly worth every penny. Uh, the wait has been worth it. Uh, the team have been really great with communication with the community and just letting everybody know when things will be delivered, when there's been delays with shipping, all that kind of stuff. And the overall product, uh, all in all, is very much worth it. You can still order them. Uh, the company that delivered these, or at least put them together here in the UK, was uh, Zatu Games. Uh, so if you take a look at the links probably that will be in the description, uh, you can go ahead and see if you can order your own copy. I'm still waiting for the t-shirt as well, because again, I did order that. So if uh, James or Paul could let me know somewhere in the comments or on Discord or wherever, where that may be in future and when that's coming, that'll be great. But yeah, James and Paul have been really great. Uh, I am still waiting for a t-shirt that I ordered uh, alongside all of this. Uh, I'm guessing that's gonna be sent out separately, but if uh, Stone Soul Games could let the community know when those could be coming out, that would be wonderful. Uh, and yeah, in the meantime, that is gonna wrap it up for this unboxing. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you can join me for future videos and hopefully we can uh, kickstart some kind of campaign with this miniatures game. Let me know in the comments actually if you want it to be on Tabletop Simulator. Do you prefer seeing the digital uh, version because it's kind of easier to look at the overall board or would you like me to do it in this like physical space? I am gonna need some more space because the mat is hanging off my desk at the moment. But yeah, let me know everything in the comments and in the meantime, I will catch you guys later for the next one. Thank you.